Fireside Christmas Short Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Fireside Christmas Short Stories by Various. The Eve of St. Nicholas by Faith Wynne. In a neat little house in an old-fashioned German village on the banks of the beautiful Rhine, with flat meadows and broad fields and roads bordered with tall poplars, there lived a happy family by the name of Lichtenfels. There were two daughters named Christine and Alice, the sunlight of the home where clouds were rare. One month, however, before the advent of St. Nicholas Day, something unusual occurred and this something was a troubled pucker on the white forehead of little Alice, and as she watched the nimble fingers of Christine slipping the stitches off and on, on and off her shining needles, she sighed so deeply that the sister asked anxiously, What ails thee, Liebchen? I am so afraid that St. Nicholas will ask me again this year if I can knit, she replied with a quiver in her voice. So he will, Alice, so he will. And what canst thou answer? The mother wanted to teach thee, but thou wouldst not learn. I know I was naughty not to obey. If I learn now, will St. Nicholas pardon me? I am sure he will. Then I will learn before the month is out, said Alice, skipping after Christine to get the yarn and needles and a pretty picture the mother found when she entered the room a while later. The smiling sisters were seated side by side on the wooden settee. Christine's arms were half bared, for it was one of those warm October days which with us will call the squirrel and the bee from out their winter home, and her fair head was bowed until it almost touched the flaxen locks of the child, her face eager and flushed as she guided the awkward little fingers through the stitches that seemed so determined to drop out of line. Patience and perseverance are fine partners and generally accomplish their aim. When the eve of the 5th of November rolled around, Alice was ready to enjoy with an untroubled heart the sights in the window of the Conditorai, confectioner's shop, where many little wooden-shod feet pattered that night to buy a chocolate shoe and to admire the picture-cakes of immense roosters with flowing tails and lordly crests, ladies in ruffs and knights in armour with sword and lance, St. Nicholas on a white horse being the most frequent figure. These picture-cakes are made in wooden moulds, thick square blocks of wood with the form to be made deeply cut into them the dough is pressed firmly into this cutting until it takes its shape when it is removed and baked most plentiful of all the pretty toys are little candy shoes generally made of brown chocolate with white rosettes and trimmings which are always expected to be provided to hold food for st nicholas's white horse when the good saint comes in the night with his gifts and sad is the heart of the child who cannot find a groschen to buy one there was such a one standing close to christine who whispered that she could not afford a chocolate shoe, so she had made one of potato and would put the oats in it, adding the fervent hope that St. Nicholas would not be angry. Of course he will not, said Christine. He will know you did your best, and that is all any of us can do. That night there were many children in this little village in a state of great excitement filling the shoes for the white steed with rye or oats or sugar, and blacking their own until they could almost see themselves in them, which were then placed upon a table beside their beds close to the chocolate shoes. This preparation is made with their hearts in their mouths, for they are expecting any moment to hear St. Nicholas's bell announcing his approach. Finally it comes, ting-a-ling-ling, -ling sounding clearly in the still night air. The door is opened politely by the mother who bids him enter. At one side he carries a long, well-filled bag, and in one hand a bundle of rods. He bows graciously and says as Christmas is so near, 
the Christkind has sent him to each home to see where he must bring presents on that blessed day. He asks the trembling Alice, who clings to her mother's arm, whether she has yet learned to knit, and a smile passes over his face when she almost shrieks out in her excitement and earnestness, Yes, yes, good St. Nicholas! He then assures her that she and all the good children will find a gift from out his well-filled sack beside their beds in the morning, which will be as a promise to them that on Christmas Eve the Christ-child will bring more beautiful presents. The day scarcely dawns before the village children begin to peep around, and alas for the naughty ones who find only a bundle of sticks. The good boys and girls, however, are delighted with the picture cakes that adorn the little stand at their bedside. Laid carefully across the top of Alice's shoe is a large cake made in the shape of a stocking, marked, For the little girl who has learned the useful art of knitting. And the potato shoe in a poorer part of the village is filled with the sweetest of sweets, and a card lay beside it, upon which was written, she did the best she could. When Christmas Day came, with all its hopes and fears for the childish heart, the promises of St. Nicholas were fulfilled. The Christ child remembered the good with bounteous and beauteous gifts, and the birch rods left by old Pelts Nicol, we may believe, kept the naughty children in order the next year. But, you know, that is not the most acceptable goodness which grows out of a desire of reward or fear of punishment. May the glad Christmas find you and keep you good, because it is right to be good. End of the Eve of St. Nicholas by Faith Wynne Recording by Ruth Golding